Hey watercolor wizards, Harja here. I'm gonna be sharing how I've recently started using tins for flat art storage, and also I'm gonna share a recent art haul that I got that has to do with teaching classes in person in Santa Cruz, so I'm really excited about that. Let's get started. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic painting adventures begin. Usually I've had my art in portfolios like this one. This is one of the few that I have left that's for a travel portfolio. It's a nice portfolio and it's archival and all that stuff, but it doesn't really store very efficiently. You know, there's a lot of space here that's just taken up by the sleeves and everything. And I also have to start taping up sleeves where they start to tear after a while when you, you know, move pieces around and stuff. So I was just getting really sick of the fact that I had a ton of these portfolios and these are the Itoya portfolios. And I also had sleeves that are also made by Itoya and they're plastic sleeves and I thought those would be better. They're a single sleeve and you can slide your art into them. And they also started to tear and the zippers would fail on them and stuff. So I just decided that I had to do something different. And I already had tabourets, but I didn't want to have the art just lying inside of the tabouret. We wanted it to be a little bit more protected inside of the tabouret drawers. I saw these tins online and I love tins. I couldn't find them anywhere in any American art stores. I literally had to go to a Chinese website, a Chinese seller to get these over to me. And yes, of course I used PayPal because I don't want like some kind of <laughs> identity theft happening. What I really liked about this was it made me think of something that I don't understand why I was too stupid not to think of before, which is that this is a travel art journal, except for they've made it so that they've cut out these little squares separately. I don't like bound books and I've taken a lot of my art journals apart in the past. So this is great because you can have one sheet at a time and you can even probably tape it onto this while you're painting and it gives you a hard surface and you can, you know, have just one sheet at a time, put it back, change the order of them, which is probably the major reason why I take my journals apart is I don't end up liking the order for some things or wanting to get rid of certain things. It's just to me a perfect travel watercolor journal if you have that. And then I also saw this round one and these are, I think a little bit more than four inches across as far as the size of the paper. There was a big cushion foam thingy at the bottom. So when you open it, it looks like it's filled all the way, but actually once you remove the little foam insert, it only fills up halfway. So they kind of ripped you off with it, how much paper they're selling you. There are 24 sheets in here, but you know, I wanted the tin and so I could always replace it with Arches paper and I haven't tried the paper yet. So I'll let you know once I try it, but I really, really like the concept of having a travel watercolor journal that's in a tin form instead of in an art journal form. No spills or nothing in your bag, in your watercolor bag can actually hurt this as much as if you have an open journal where three sides of it are gonna be more vulnerable to other stuff. But like I said, for me, it's mostly because I love tins and I've got a ton of tins. So it gave me the idea that instead of buying more portfolios that have sleeves, that I should use my tins that I had to store my art. And I love candy canes and Christmas stuff as everybody knows if you know anything about me. I thought that this was a great size to take the playing cards out and oops, here goes all my sleeves. Well, I used to have when I was younger when I collected comic book cards. If you get a tin that can fit two playing card decks in it, then it'll fit your ATCs. Okay, so I messed with the camera exposure a bit. I think it was a little bit overexposed. I did find that I could fit all of my ATCs in here just right next to each other, like I said, because this is fitting two playing cards side by side. And playing cards are actually a little bit smaller than ATCs, but not by much. If you get one that has just a single stack of them, then it'll be a single stack ATCs. But try to make sure that it fits at least two and a half by three and a half size pieces of paper, because that's your ATC size, plus you're gonna put a sleeve on it. Now this is actually taking up way less room than a journal like this, that when you fill it up, the profile of it is enormous. If I had an ATC size journal, it would do the same thing. Well, why can't I just store my art like vertically in hanging file folders or something? It's like, well, you certainly can, but always store your watercolors flat because they're going to end up warping a bit if you store them vertically. So that's why I really like the tin idea. I actually also found this case that's also for ATCs. It's too uh, wide in this direction to fit into my tabaret drawer. The tabaret drawers are flat file drawers. I have a few more packs that came in the pack that I bought. I'm just going to put the sleeves in here and then as I need them, I can get them out. But this is only $1.99. So if you don't want to get like a seven or $10 tin and you don't have an ATC size tin, then you can also get something that can hold your trading cards, whether they're comic book cards, baseball cards, or artist trading cards are all the same size. You can put them in this. And for $1.99, that's really, really cheap. But I like tins because they're metal and they'll basically last forever versus plastic. So I did have another portfolio of this exact size that had all of my original art that was in postcard sizes. And I actually moved it into this tin. And this tin was a cookie tin. You can see that I've managed to put a huge amount of my paintings in here. All of this stuff was originally in an Itoya portfolio or it's called, I think, a profolio. 
and it all fits in here and there's way more room for more painting. So I can go ahead and stack all these up and they actually make themselves flatter lying in here. It's a great way to store your art. I'll show a pop-up on the screen that shows the kind of Itoya sleeves that I had. Some of them are inside of a bound journal and some of them are just a single folder where you just stack your paintings. So this is not any different than that, except for instead of it being something where the plastic zipper eventually fails and the plastic cracks, this is the tin and it's gonna last forever. Plus it holds a lot of work and it's metal and very sturdy. So it, it starts to flatten your pieces even more as you stack them all the way to the top. So I think that's gonna be much nicer than the sleeves I have where the crappy <laughs> plastic zippers are always failing and also this plastic itself starts to tear after a while, so I think that's much nicer. And all that art that I had in one of those books, and it's fit right there, and it hasn't even taken up half of this tin. I can continue to put stuff in there, and again, this is the exact same type of portfolio that I had it in. And look at how this is taking up in a drawer about as much space. And when I open up the tabaret drawer, oftentimes I would catch in the top because it would be expanding. And that's not going to be happening with this tin. It's always going to stay this height. These are to like sell cookies as well. And I've put my round paintings in here. So I've got my goat and my reindeer and my Russian castle and flying ship and again it was to emulate the fact that I had a round tin that does this and but except for I had paintings that were larger than that but they were round so I thought all my round paintings can go in this separate tin. So now you can see that all of these bigger paintings are fitting right into here. This ink tents blocks tin. So I don't want to have like 80 tins because where do I put them in the tabaret? So I think the larger and then the circle and then the really small ones for the ATC is going to work fine for me. This is filled almost to the top and it's again taking up so much less space. I had like several plastic folders with zippers that were holding all of these and now I don't have to use those anymore. They are already quite flat and storage in here with the tin compressing it is going to really make them quite a bit flatter. Oh, I also have these long narrow ones that again fit into this tin because this ink tents tin is actually quite long and also wide so it fits all of those too. So just go from the tallest height to the medium to the smallest so that you don't end up not being able to see all of them. Of course I wiped all these tins out before I used them because this one could have had like paint residue on it. The other ones could have had like germs and lint from the store. And the last tin I have currently is this one and it's a 9 by 12 tin which is currently the biggest size that I'm painting at. And I do have older paintings that are much larger but they're not going to be able to be going in tins because I couldn't find any tins that large and plus I'm not painting at that size anymore so I can just leave them in the plastic sleeves. Not that much space in the drawer, it's less than the height of the drawer, but it's going to actually be able to save way, way more paintings than I was putting into those sleeves. It's these four or five tins that I have right now for these paintings are probably going to be enough for, I don't know, another decade because everything can smash flat. And plus, you know, you sell paintings and give some of them away so it's not like they're just gonna keep increasing in number without some of them leaving the house. I did wanna quickly share that I bought from Jackson's a few things and they only cost like a buck or two and they're related to ATCs kind of. This is a Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press pad and it was only like $1.40 or $1.30. And I haven't tried this watercolor paper and I thought it would be nice to just try it in this little teeny pad because I can make ATCs. And here's an ATC and you can see that it's almost the size of this pad. So if you trim off a little bit at the top, it'll be basically an ATC size exactly. And I got a black watercolor paper one too. The cover is gone because this fell in the dirty entry area to the cottage and I had to have Elijah strip the cover and then wipe this for me because like, you know, I'm OCD. And now the two pages on the top and the bottom are a little bit damaged <laughs> because of the wiping, but it doesn't really matter. I'll just use the other side and then the inside stuff. But again, this is black watercolor paper and I'm interested in using that once I feel like it's not germane enough. I feel like my heart and hands are coated with germs. Same time I was getting these mini pads of little watercolor paper that I wanted to try from Stonehenge. I also got these artist trading cards. Please don't ever, ever, ever buy this for yourself because this is what came in there. This is like thinner than cardstock, definitely not watercolor paper. I don't know what they mean. So if I try this and it turns out to be something amazing, I'll let you know. But this seems like the worst value for anything. So don't get Crescent artist trading cards in watercolor because they're just gonna send you some really thin, shiny paper that has that's not even watercolor paper. I don't know what it is. And I also got this. And this is like a travel easel or a tabletop easel. I already have a drawing board, so you might be asking, well, why did you get this, Hajra? And the answer to that is, so I was recently offered some class 
class is to teach in Santa Cruz in person and that's really great because I've only been here four and a half months and I have missed teaching in person. I used to teach at a university before I got sick and then also had to take care of my mom. So it's really nice to have something to get back to. And I'll be teaching at the Santa Cruz Art League um, probably several classes, I hope. And I'm also in talks uh, with somebody from the University of Santa Cruz Arboretum to teach botanical and wildlife painting classes there as well. So I'm really excited about that. So <laughs> I went and got myself this easel because of that. And this is a $25 easel. It has a nine by 12 surface you know, have this propped up if I wanted because it's got a little thing here. So just like when I'm at home and I wanna use a drawing board, I can use that in, in person when I'm teaching. It actually had a little shelf that flipped out to put a canvas here, but I had Elijah and screw it because I do watercolor and not oil or acrylic canvas. And I want a flat surface where I can rest my hand and not have a surface where the little thing that flips out to hold the canvas or your pencil is getting in my way. So I'm just gonna masking tape that on if I'm painting something. And the reason I got this particular one, apart from it being the right size for my painting and having it, tilting surface is that it has a little drawer at the bottom here and I'm gonna put all of my stuff I'll actually probably take a picture and pop up the stuff and I have spaces now to put my palette and my paints and everything while I'm traveling and I can put my business cards over here and like I said I'm gonna have my rest of my watercolor travel kit I'm gonna put the paints and the little palettes in there so all of that stuff should just fit in here for acrylic and oil paint mixing but that's not relevant to me because I do watercolor painting so I'm just gonna keep this at home I think it might actually be a nice support to put a postcard or an ATC down on when I'm painting. So, and I'm gonna carry it flat. These little drawers lock closed and it does have a little handle on the side that you can carry it tilted like that. But because I'm worried about ruining the points of my brushes, I'm just gonna carry it flat. So these things don't knock around too much, see? It's probably best if you have brushes with covers when you're traveling, but I think the only thing I'll have to carry separately is like my water cup. So that's everything I wanted to share. And I'm actually super excited about those classes because I've been too sick or busy with family obligations to get back to teaching any kind of classes in person. And I also, had that recent unfair Skillshare nightmare thing that I posted as a video separately. So this is actually a nice diversion and a different venue, which is, you know, teaching in person versus teaching online to give my brain a break. See how I could travel and paint this um, at this angle and just tape that up there, tape underneath it. Uh, a quick Muha study painting, because this video is just a hodgepodge of everything, I guess. I actually sold the original for this and it was on a sketch, Archie's sketch paper and not watercolorable. Leftover paints on a palette here and it's just a mix between Snellier and watercolor pencils and some gouache. So there's a lot of different paints here, but it, these colors work for the piece, which is called Topaz by Muha. And so this is like one of his gems personified. So that's what I'll be painting here. This is actually a little bit resistant to this paint. So a weird experiment. I'm just putting it on rather dry. A lot of white mixed into it to make that skin tone instead of water. Probably have to go back and re-ink some of it though. It was a study I did and got a, you know, was on a paper that I couldn't paint, so I've been wanting to paint it since. It's just been in my head. So here's just an opportunity for me to do a quick study. And again, this isn't the best paper, but at least I'm not ruining the original, which was on super thin sketch paper and is safely gone and not here for me to ruin. Given that he was painting somebody who, who's a topaz gem, he did have more of a yellow tint to it instead of more of a peach tint to it. Now for some of this where I'm not gonna speak, then I'll just put the music on and then I'll come back and talk a bit more when I've got more to say. And when I don't, then you'll hear some more of the music. But you can certainly do a study just like this one. I think I have the sketch on my Patreon for download if you wanna use it as a reference. I don't really have the hand energy to paint multiple cards. That's why I'd prefer to just paint one and then get prints from Redbubble. So that's always gonna be the better idea anyway for me. And this whole thing is gonna be wet on dry.
lot of MUHA studies, and in fact that first class that I'll be teaching for the Santa Cruz Art League in July, I think it's on July 13th is when it's scheduled, that will also be a MUHA study. And I think um, the one I wanted to do was the moon, MUHA, the moon personified. So it's a five hour class, so I'll get to hang out with students for five hours and go all the way from the sketch process to the very end of painting. And it's not a drawing class. I'm not going to teach them how to draw freehand from the very start, but I'm going to help them. I still am going to give them some basic drawing and sketching tips and that kind of thing so we can get the sketch done. And then after that, we're going to talk about color theory and stuff and do the color wheel for the painting. And then after that, discuss limited palettes a bit and how they work and why they're effective and then do the actual painting. And it's a five hour class, so I think there's going to be plenty of time. But again, that's why I got that tabletop easel and everything, because it'll have my painting on it very comfortably to prop up or to use flat. It'll also be easy for me to reach those supplies that are all in the drawer and pack pack up and set up pretty fast. Actually, I still don't like how peach that is. I think I'd still like to make it more yellow, so I think I am going to make it more yellow. a bit more warmth because again she's supposed to be representing the gem topaz when I go ahead and uh, add the rest of the paint colors in and relatively speaking this will sort of die back die down a bit as far as the the yellow intensity of it some of these areas, which of course is uh, bringing some of the rosy color back versus the topaz color, but I did want it to harmonize a little bit more with the, uh, the face.
Okay, so I went ahead and finished the rest of this study and I did end up using a little bit of wet and wet for the background, but everything else is basically wet on dry. I also went back and re-inked uh, the lines so that I ended up having bolder ink lines again because, you know, they sort of get subdued when you put paint on top of them, depending on if your paint's transparent or opaque. And in this case, since I was using gouache, I did have subdued ink lines. So I went back and remedied that with uh, some re-inking. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a uh, kind of just a hodgepodge mix of sharing and reviewing some of the art supplies and stuff that I got recently. And also I threw in a little bit of uh, ink and wash studying here with this Muha piece. Oh, it was a great artist to satisfy a ink and wash itch. Well, wizards, hope you enjoyed this video showing how I use flat art tins for storage now and, and also stuff I got recently to supplement teaching art classes in person, and you can always use that yourself for classes that you're taking in person or travel watercolor type stuff. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my website dashboard with all my online platform links on one page to support my art creation and instruction. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all epic art adventures.